Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Blessing, blessings, blessings, blessings. All right, so while we wait for a few people to log on here, um, I'd like to welcome those of you who are new to the channel. Welcome. God bless you. Um, and if this channel is a blessing to you, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Amen. But today we're going to be talking about uh, a king's touch. A king's touch. That touch of God upon your life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, for this word, Lord, that you placed upon my heart, Father. Lord, I thank you, Father, for everybody who this word is for. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the hand of favor, blessings. Wow, yes, Lord. Out of the uh, out of the blue, Father, there are some people, Lord, who don't even see what you are about to do. They don't expect, Lord, what you are about to do, Father, and it's going to be a complete humbling experience. And so we thank you now, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessings, everybody. Good to see all of you. How's everyone doing? Thank you, Holy the Lord said to me today, actually a few days ago, but he was reminding me today, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I want to speak to some people today. There are some people who don't even realize that they, they have this uh, uh, Mephibosheth disposition in certain areas. Mm. 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 They, have, they have certain places. There, there, there are many people... Uh, th I'll say it this way. This word is for more people than, than, than would initially understand. It's because uh, when people think of Mephibosheth or they think of Lodabar, uh, uh, they oftentimes th tend to think of uh, 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 um, uh, the, the, a king's touch or their, the, the exchange that Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth had with David as one of just financial. But the Lord says this, that some of you, your loader bar is in your relationship. Mm. Some of you, your loader bar is in your, uh, uh, is in not knowing your purpose. Loader bar literally means uh, uh, no grazing without pasture. Mm. 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 It said, it said I, 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 some people are like, well, I got money, but I don't have friends. Oh, boy. I, I, I don't have relationships. I, I, have, I, have, I, ha I have a job, but I don't have purpose. Mm. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So listen, if you guys got your Bibles out, let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 9, and let's read. And David said, is there yet any that is... Oh, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow, the uh, Spirit of the Lord is heavy. Man, the anointing of the Lord is so heavy here. Let me say this to you guys. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. The Lord means what is about to be declared over your life right now. God means business. Some of you are in, in line for real change. And you know, what's, you, know what, you know what happens when you have these kind of experiences with God? Let me tell you guys something. There is a sense of unworthiness. And I know that there are uh, some that, that operate in a space of cynicism within their own hearts. You've reached that Sarah place that I talk about all the time. The Lord sees you. Amen. He give, he's given me eyes to see you, to see you in your heart. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Should I have the pleasure? And, 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 and it really speaks to whether or not God is still able, still willing, still doing. It's one of the things that, that my wife and I know to be true, that we stand on, that God is still just as splendid as he was then, he still is now. The problem that we really face, thank you, Holy Spirit, I wanna give you guys this tidbit before I go further. The problem that we really face is the Bible talks about that in the last days, because iniquity would abound, 
right? The, 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 the love of men would wax gross because of so much difficulty. It's hard to find God's love. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. And here's, the, here's what the Lord is saying to you right now. Not only is it hard to find God's love, to see God's love when you have this increase of iniquity, because iniquity is abounding, because the, the darkness and, 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 and the wickedness is, 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 is magnifying itself, sometimes it's harder to see God's love but most importantly for the church, it's harder to receive God's love that is contained in his goodness. Why? Because people are not as kind as they used to be. Mm, 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 mm. And, 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 for, and so often, because we are the light of this world, we often represent the reflection of God. Whenever God wants to do something, he, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Whenever God wants to do something, he looks for someone to do it through. And, 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 and can I just say this? There's some of you listening right now. The Lord is just putting this on my heart fresh. That, that, that when iniquity abounds, the love of many wax cold. The love of many wax cold, meaning the clarity or the perception of God or the willing vessels. Uh, and, 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 so, and so it's hard to believe that God is still kind. Why? Because there's not as many willing vessels to watch this for God to work through. Somebody say slim pickings. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. Come on, somebody. You see, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, how God, how God, uh, uh, how God typically moves is through somebody. But you're going to see that even in this time, hear me now, hear me now, those of you listening, God, is, God will even work through the secular world. Watch this. Whatever he can't work, watch this through the church. Some of you are about to have bosses that are unsaved say, you know what, I see something in you. Some some are you some some are you are some of you are about to some of you are about to see people in 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 in, in who are not in the church be the vehicles that God uses. Watch this to bless you in the church. Come on, somebody. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Why, church? Why has it been so hard for you to reach out and grab hold of God's kindness? Bring it into your life. Bring the blessings of the Lord. Come on, somebody. That makes one rich and added no sorrow. Bring the blessings of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Every spiritual blessing. Bring every promise. Bring the knowledge of God in. Why? It's because iniquity abounds. Mm. Oh, boy. There are more people that have stories about, there are more people that have stories about who hurt them mm. than they do about who helped them. And, and so as a result, there's a cynicism that has arisen in the church. Watch this, a skepticism. There's a cynicism, a skepticism, and, and so much has created this, has created this, uh, 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 this, this dynamic where, where now when God begins to declare his will, when God begins to open up and say, here I am, watch this, when God begins to stand his ground and say, come unto me, people's like, hold on, I can't recognize you. Through all the iniquity out here, I can't believe, it's hard to believe that God is still God. Watch this, because the earth is so dark. Come on, somebody. It's hard to believe that God is still good. Watch this, because people are not good. See, the thing about that is, is this, simply put, I don't know who this is for, but I want to minister to you for a second. God was not created in the image of man. Man was created in the image of God. So when people begin to turn away, God still remains. Mm. Mm. So people are not, so people, people have, people at their worst, they don't reflect God. But when they're called, they're chosen, they have the opportunity to reflect God. But they cannot cancel out or nullify who God is. Because who God is is not subject to the shortcomings and frailties of man. Man has always been created to be a reflection. So even in difficult times or hard, come on somebody, even in difficult times or hardship that does not, that does not, that does not replicate, replicate, watch this, the heart of God. When wickedness abound, it doesn't mean all of a sudden, watch this, God has lost his kindness. God is no longer kind. God is no longer good. Mm. But I want to say this is what has, this is one of, this is one of, been one of the major things that's been getting in the way for some people. Mm. 
It's because the iniquity has abound and the love of many has waxed cold. Do you know what that verse is really saying? Many people are going to find it difficult to see God. Why? Because God is love. Oh, hear what I'm saying. This is major revelation. <laughs> this is that next level. Because when iniquity abounds and, and, and when you look around and all you see is the darkness and you look around and all you see is the chaos and all you see is the wickedness, and you, the, there's something within the soul of man that cries out for vengeance, that cries out for, for you know, this, right? Without the Holy Spirit, the last thing that most people cry out is for mercy, right? We'd be like, Lord, come and judge them. Lord, come deal with them. Lord, come. Because it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Come now, Jesus. Vindicate, right? We, 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 we shout the same thing able shouting right vindicate us look at this these murderers are getting away right and we do that we do that in our prayer life but what i'm saying is is this the lord just showed me he said son and it's becoming increasingly more difficult for my people to call out or to to recognize my love mm. it's becoming more difficult because of the iniquity that's abounding the love of my people are waxing cold and do you know why that's a problem? Because love is just not what God is asking us to do. Love is actually who God is. Oh, boy. Love is, love is not just a commandment. It's a person. So if my love is waxing cold, then that means I'm also losing perspective on the one who is love. Oh, boy. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Right? What am I saying? That God is good whether or not you can perceive it. That God is good, and it's important for us to understand this so that we don't allow the corruption and the wickedness and the, and the darkness that is on the, on the world to, to, to corrupt our perception of God. Why? Because there are things about God, watch this, that God has purposed for you, that God has intended for you to grab from him. Somebody say, Lord, I'm going to take it from you. Oh, boy. Uh, y'all, okay, that sounded that sounded strange. That sounded strange, even as it was coming out of my mouth. And I know some people was like, "What? Take it from him?" You know, when God said you got to receive it. Do you know what the word "receive"? What He said, "Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness." It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean those who sit there and say, "Okay, Lord, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, 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 okay, Lord, I'll take it if you're willing to give it to me." No. It means those who take it, those who take the abundance of grace, meaning God sits here, God sits here, let's just say God sits here with a dollar bill in his hands and he said, this is yours, receive it. And you sit there and like, okay, Lord, I receive it, I receive it. And you sitting there looking at that dollar bill like, okay, I really need that dollar bill. He said, okay, receive it. I've given it to you. You got to get out of your seat. You got to go to where he is and Pull it out of his hand. Why? Because his hand's extended out already. And re receive means that you gotta you gotta be able not take not take through coercion or through some form of 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 uh, 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 untoward manner. No, God is saying, here you are. If somebody just like somebody say, here you are. I'm offering you this piece of cake, or I'm offering you this. What do you do? You extend your hands out to grab hold and pull it unto you. Those who receive, meaning there are people right now who said, I would receive the abundance of grace, but I'm waiting for God to give it to me. He said, no, I have already given it to you. I need you to receive, meaning you got to extend your hands of faith and pull it in. You know what that action says is that I'm, I'm going to take it. But people find themselves disrupted because they don't feel unworthy. Oh, boy, I don't feel worthy enough to receive that grace. So maybe I'll just wait for God to give it to me and then I'll have it. No, God says I've already given it to you, but you have not received it. We look the word up. The root word, the root word there, you're looking at the word in, in the Greek literally means to take. To grab hold of. How many of you have grabbed hold of that grace? Uh, the, the, regardless of regardless of how you feel about yourself, regardless of whether or not you think you deserve it, regardless of whether or not you think you think you are worthy of it. But you grab that grace and pull it into you. Now it becomes your possession because it was given, not because you earned it. 
Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So let's get back to this word. Get, let's get back to this real quick. But I, I set the stage because something is about to happen for you guys that has little to do with you, but it's something that has been contemplated in the hallways of heaven. You're about to become a recipient. Let's read. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Oh, boy. Listen, the love of God is so strong here. There is getting ready to be an unveiling of God's kindness, an unleashing of God's kindness over your life that is about to absolutely break you down. Watch this. He says this. While Mephibosheth was in Lodabar, there was a contemplation occurring. The king was was speaking with this the king was speaking with the with the king's council saying is there anyone left of his house that I could show my kindness to on behalf of the one I loved see what you don't realize what see what what religion will never tell you what religion will never tell you about god that even if you weren't worthy of the love of God. <laughs> no one can get around Jesus being the beloved. And what, what people don't understand, what you don't understand right now is how there has been conversation in the halls of heaven regarding your time frame. There's been conversations where God is saying, listen, even if, even if you yourself had no relationship with the king, Jonathan did. You are just related to Jonathan, but you become a beneficiary, watch this, of the, of the relationship that Jonathan had with the king. See, things turn around, things turn around, and we're going to get to that in a second. But I want you to see this here, and David said, is there yet any, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul? Saul was David's arch enemy, even though it wasn't mutual. David was a faithful servant. Saul was a vindictive and jealous king. Mm. He hated the potential in David. He wanted to snuff it out to prolong his reign. Mm. He wanted to try the, to foil the plans of God or the verdict of God just like he overruled, watch this, just like he overruled the, 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 uh, the decree of God and was disobedient by not destroying all in the land. Once again, that same pride. Now, maybe I can circumvent again. See, God told him, I want you to kill everything. Don't leave nothing. Don't let nothing remain. He said, well, I'm going to just save a choice few. I'm going to just save a choice few things, you know, and then try to lie to the prophet. Say, well, we're just going to do it for some sacrifices. And I just kind of thought, right, he didn't repent. I don't want to get too far off into that. But David wasn't the enemy of Saul. Saul hated David. You find yourself in situations with people who have conflicts with you that have nothing to do with you. You know, there are some people that, uh, uh, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just say it like this. There are some people who, uh, some of you listening right now, that some of your biggest conflicts have been with people uh, 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 where the situation itself has nothing to do with you. Don't you know people will hate you for their own failures? People will hate you for what they have not, watch this, people will hate you for what they failed to be even though you have not become it yet yourself. People will hate and despise you for the potential you carry. And we'll either, watch this, and we'll either seek to snuff it out, stomp it out, discourage it out by their words or their actions. 
They will begin to speak against what they see is, is what, what they the, they will speak against the potential that you carry, hoping to squash, hoping to squash your ability to arrive at a place, watch this, that they failed at. Or a place, watch this, that they, they can't see themselves going to. And so there are some people that you've been taking personal about, you've been, you've been, there's some people who've been confused about why is this thing happening, right? Have you ever said that? Has anybody ever said that? Why are they mad at me? I just try to love them. I just try to be a good son. I just try to be a good daughter. I just try to be a good friend. I just try to be a good worker. I just try to be a good servant. They hated me without a cause. It's not even a reason. But their hatred to you, their hatred of you or hatred for you has little to do with you. Has more to do with what they see in you. Boy, watch this. Verse 2 says this, And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king uh, said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And verse 3 says this, And the king said, Is there not yet any? David went searching. Can I just say this? You guys have no idea. And I don't say this categorically.